Senator Lee, thanks for taking a few minutes to chat with us. I wanted to ask your reaction to the news today that Lieutenant Ridge Alconis is being transferred back to U.S. custody. Well, I'm thrilled, uh, thrilled that uh, he's going to be back on U.S. soil uh, uh, within an hour or so. He is a possibility that he may have landed already. This has been a long time in the making. He's been in uh, languishing in a Japanese prison for about a year and a half. During that time, I've been out there to see him, visited him multiple times in prison, met with uh, uh, Japanese government officials, uh, along with U.S. Embassy and uh, U.S. military personnel in Japan. Uh, and, and of course, many in the United States in trying to make this day happen. I'm thrilled that this day is here. I just got a phone a little while ago with Brittany Alconis, Lieutenant Alconis's wife. She's in good spirits. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough thing uh, uh, to have had him gone at this time, but you know, it, as happy as everyone is, we're all apprehensive about the, the uncertainty now surrounding uh, what happens next. It's up to the U.S. Parole Commission to meet uh, with him in the coming days or weeks, review his case, and decide what, if any, additional prison time in the United States system will be necessary. That's how these international prisoner uh, transfer treaties work. Uh, the receiving country, the host country, receives its own citizen back, and then uh, the idea is that uh, what additional time needs to be served in the home country will be determined by that home country's legal system. In our system, that's the U.S. Parole Commission. So we should know in a few weeks uh, what his fate will be. I hope uh, and partially expect, and I know this will be argued by Lieutenant Alconis's very capable legal team, that the, the time he served in the Japanese prison system is, should be more than enough uh, 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 to fulfill his obligations. He should never have been sent to prison to begin with, and there's certainly no reason for us to imprison him longer here. It obviously took a while to get to this day. Is there any insight you have as to what finally broke the camel's back in getting this to happen? Well, the Japanese government has entered into this international prisoner transfer treaty, and this case met uh, all the hallmark characteristics of a situation in which the prisoner should be eligible for transfer under that treaty. Shouldn't have ever taken this long. There's no reason under the treaty or under Japanese law why it should have taken this long or nearly this long. Uh, over a year ago, I uh, went over to Japan and met with then Foreign Minister Hayashi. We had a conversation uh, uh, about it, and it was our understanding when we left that meeting that he would be transferred out of Japan in a matter of, uh, uh, of uh, days or weeks, not months or years. And here we are nearly a year and a half later, and he's just barely coming home. So um, it, this is frustrating, and it raises all kinds of questions, all kinds of questions about the you know tens of thousands of Americans who are in Japan in one way or another connected to our U.S. military presence there, a U.S. military presence that provides a significant part of uh, uh, Japan's security. Uh, you'd think that they'd be grateful enough for the presence of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines, that they would treat them well. You would hope that they would treat them at least as well as they expect their military personnel to be tr treated by other countries. Now, Japan has exactly one overseas military installation. It's in Djibouti. It requires Djibouti under their status of forces agreement between Japan and Djibouti that uh, Japanese military personnel in Djibouti, serving in Djibouti, are entitled to a full, full uh, uh, civil and criminal immunity while there. Uh, and yet Japan doesn't offer U.S. military personnel that immunity. In fact, uh, we'd be grateful if, if it even offered something much less than that, even though they should offer as much as they offer, as they demand in Djibouti. They should, at a minimum, treat our military personnel with the same respect and give them the same rights and privileges that they give their own citizens. And yet that did not happen here. I find that unacceptable. And that's a good reason for us to reevaluate our ongoing military relationship with Japan, including uh, and especially our status of forces agreement between the United States and Japan. It needs to make clear that uh, our soldiers, sailors, airmen and Marines protecting Japan on Japanese soil uh, are, are to be treated well and to be treated to no less respectfully and with no fewer rights than they would get in either Japan or the United States.
Finally, Senator, I know his family is urging the DOJ to release him immediately. That was their word. Are you going to be doing anything to lobby the department or the administration in the meantime uh, for that immediate release or at least as soon as possible? Yeah, keep in mind, it's not actually uh, 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 main justice, as we would call it. It's the U.S. Parole Commission. It's a uh, uh, quasi independent body. It's a, a committee, a commission that makes these decisions. Now, the U.S. Parole Commission used to have a much broader role before we adopted the Uniform Sentencing Guidelines in the federal system. In recent years, as the, uh, the Uniform Guidelines systems uh, have been in place, uh, their role has been diminished to the point where uh, this is one of the, the only remaining roles they have, is to decide what U.S. sentence will be imposed once a prisoner has been transferred into the United States from overseas under the U.S. Uh, uh, prisoner transfer treaty. And so they, they will be the ones who will make that decision. It's, it's not the attorney general who has that power. Anything else, Senator, you'd like to add? Uh, no, just that, um, uh, well, I, I'll add this. Lieutenant Alconis is an amazing uh, young man, uh, 35 years old, um, husband, father, a devoted uh, U.S. Navy officer. Uh, from everyone I've spoken to, I've uh, learned that this is someone who serves with incredible devotion. He is an expert in his field. Uh, he, he's published multiple academic papers uh, in respected publications all over the country. And he's done all this in pursuit of his military career. Uh, he was imprisoned based on his involvement in an automobile accident, an accident uh, that was tragic. It was tragic and two Japanese citizens uh, unfortunately lost their lives in that accident. But that accident was not the result of anything we would consider criminal conduct in the United States or in any civilized uh, country that I know anything about. What happened was uh, Lieutenant Alconis was on a drive with his family. He was in the middle of a conversation with his young daughter and mid conversation, he lost consciousness. He suffers from a medical condition that he neither knew he had nor had any reason to know that he had. And as a result of that medical condition, he had this unforeseeable and in fact unforeseen episode in which he lost consciousness. That's what caused the accident. That, that is not the stuff of criminal culpability. That is certainly not the kind of event that would subject a person to a single day in prison in the United States, let alone uh, a, a year and a half uh, under a, a three year total sentence. So um, uh, my heart goes out to the Alconis family, to Brittany, to Ridge and Brittany's children. Um, they have been bereft of a beloved husband and father. And um, I'm just grateful that uh, he's finally back on US soil and um, look forward to seeing him again soon.